Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Women's AM. This morning we are joined by Sister Saima, Sister Nusrat and of course Sister Zara to continue our discussion on young mothers raising young children. We are a live show so do please call the studio to put your comments or questions to the panel. The number is on your screens now or you can tweet us at Islam channel hashtag WAM15. Now sisters we're really getting into our discussion yeah. there. Um, there's a the really interesting angle that comes up here is because the whole motherhood tends to get compared to our career and our studies, the, the fact that it's almost treated as an obstacle in life. And the interesting thing that I wanted to ask you was, you know, some might believe that choosing motherhood having or over having a career, especially when employment is no longer a gender problem, that is a slap in the face of people in the West who've struggled to get women that right to work. What do you think about that, Sister Nusra? I think when we look at this idea of motherhood and um, career as being something that's always at odds or mutually exclusive, that's a problem because we find that's actually promoted within society, normally with the so-called career woman being held more favorably than a mother who chooses to stay at home and not pursue a career outside the home, but rather to nurture and bring up her children. The root of this can be seen within capitalism, i.e. people being... Um, um, measured by the contributions they make and also feminist thinking that because um, you're a woman you're less capable than the man so therefore you have to kind of exercise your equality um, by only equality only being achieved in these realms mm -hmm. the problem with this is that one you're using a man as a as the as a benchmark of assessing your worth and two it implies that because you are a mother that somehow your role is inferior because you've made that decision and when it comes to the issue of woman of a woman choosing motherhood over a career and the claims that it's a slap in the face um, what we have to think about is while the efforts may be acknowledged that some feminists have done to try and succeed see, in getting that right. You that's the bit that, that right, bothers me. That is Slap that. in the face of other women who have struggled for a right that they want. Yes. Why are we obliged by this? Exactly. That comes down to even when we think about it, Islam had figured this out 1400 years ago. Mm -hmm. We've got examples of Khadija radiallahu anha who shows the, the balance between career and family life. So, yeah. We have um, the fact that they're not mutually exclusive and to top it off she c conducted her business with dignity both in the home as being a mother and outside mm. but when we look at this whole idea of slap in the face it's a double standard because when we look at particularly um, the realm of liberal feminism this maintains that the equality of a woman is sustained through the actions and choices she makes note here that the operative word is actions and choices this being the case surely a mother who chose to stay at home and nurture her child has made a choice to do that mm. but why are we criticizing her for doing that it's because um, she's exercised her choice no different to the way many women out there working have exercised their choice but because it does not fit with the ever-changing ideals of feminism or the idea of capitalist view of contribution then it becomes a problem it's this double standard mm. and until we can rectify that it's you, you look like you want to jump in here jump in uh, no, uh, <laughs> no mashallah she made some beautiful points um, very factual points in that sense. Um, that's the thing. Does it affect you? Not, to be honest, to, um, because you, know, you are a young mother. Yeah, to be honest, to, to feel uh, like that you, you know, feel uh, guilty about a group of people who struggled. Not necessarily. To, to be honest, work. not not necessarily because at the end of the day, it's a choice that you make for yourself whether you want to work mm -hmm. or whether you want to stay at home and be a mother. Or and sometimes you know you can you can do both. You can manage both mm -hmm. with like you said, Khadija Radhiyallahu with dignity and being able to do both. But obviously, looking at it from an Islamic perspective and, you know, the role of a mother and being able to stay at home and, you know, educate a child. I have a lot of, mashallah, a lot of friends who are in the homeschooling field in that sense. And they choose to, you know, keep their children at home and homeschool their children and, you know, teach those, them children themselves. And, you know, alhamdulillah, they're doing brilliant jobs. But, um, you know, you also have this um, selection of people who will come up to you and say, oh, so when are you starting work? Oh, so what do you do? But... Um, Alhamdulillah, you know, you have that independence and you can choose what, what you like to do. And again, um, I have, you know, my daughter and I have my own um, events management company called Zaf Management, which, you know, I um, balance on the side doing fundraisers and events for sisters only. So again, you're so, an example. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You, can, you can do both. And why do children have to be an obstacle? Mm, yeah. I, think I, think you talk, yeah, yeah. I, I think that people look down uh, upon people that are as women who have gone to have uh, children young and have not achieved um, certain status in their career, in their career, or have not climbed the the, the career ladder, mm -hmm. or even have left their education, they look down upon that because I think sometimes it can. They overall. Um, young mothers in the society that we grow up in are seen as a burden on society they're seen as a burden on the welfare system because what is happening is that a lot of young people are having children young and again i want to emphasize this that this includes the muslims as well 
um, they're having children young without any maturity. It's absolutely fine to have a child young. Yeah. And it's fantastic that you can achieve other things as, as well, that you have aspirations to achieve other things. And this can be uh, easily achieved if you've got family support. Definitely. Which uh, This is another thing we're lacking in the West, where the family unit is breaking down on, on, on all four corners of the house. Yeah? It is. There is an increase mm. in young mothers having children. Yeah. But um, why do you think that women are making that choice? To have the children? I think, I, yeah. personally, coming um, from my own perspective, I think a lot of our, you know, the younger generation, they're growing up and they're looking for Islam yeah. and they're looking for Allah and they're looking to, you know, kind of complete half their deen mm -hmm. and they want to do it the right way and the way that, you know, they're learning about their Islam and then they're teaching, you know, the older generation in that sense, like their parents, you know, what Islam is and how, you know, um, they want to you know, do it the right way in that sense and you go into a marriage and consequently you have a, you have a child mm -hmm. and, you know, it's not, but it's a mutual, I think it's a, you know, it's a mutual decision and this whole concept of you, know, you kind of fall back on you know, your career or whatever, like alhamdulillah I, I got my degree and I have that to fall back onto and if I did want to go back into, into that career of law I could actually go into that and you know, expand mm -hmm. on that expectation but again like the sister said support. yeah you definitely support, support for my spouse, family or, yeah, yeah. your spouse, for, first and foremost your spouse and your family support Support, like a, mm. a network for example you know being able to leave your child with people that you trust mm -hmm. you know be, be, then being able to go to work so alhamdulillah I have my mother mashallah and I have my husband alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. But, um, but just to also touch on what you said before sister summer about the um, biology of children but surely it makes sense if the biology tells us that children are ready to be mothers Not at all. where does this oh, come from yeah. How, you can subhanallah say you're nine yeah and some girls have their become a physically a woman at yeah. nine seriously yeah in this day and age or even forget day and age but particularly this day and age is a nine-year-old ready to become a mother is a nine-year-old I think that's important what you said about maturity yeah and like, is she mature is she mature enough and does she want to be a mother I, th I think then the other issue is also, you know, when you get to a certain age, it does become difficult, and that is the reality. I disagree with that too, slightly, okay? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does say in the Quran uh, that He places life where where and when he pleases. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that he will place boys in, uh, where he wants and girls, it gives some people only girls and or some people boys and girls and some people he will leave barren. Yeah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in charge of life. I'm, I'm worried about this emphasis on um, being young and being able to bear children. I am seeing now a phenomenon, in, definitely here with, with the people that I hang around, people that I went to university with, a lot of sisters have gone on to get married young and a lot of these sisters are struggling to start a family. Yeah, It doesn't necessarily mean that if you are in your prime biologically that you're going to be able to have children. And I think there's a, it's worrying, because I also help people get married, I think it's worrying when we place too much emphasis on age and fertility because Definitely. marriage is not just about bearing children. It, it is, a, it is the, 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 the format in which you, you know, you, so what, you what raise What kind of family and community do, do to ensure that they are doing this for the but right I mean, just, 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 to, just to finish this point, um, that, that the, the problem of emphasizing on age and fertility is that what, what about sisters who, for whatever reason, haven't gotten married at a young age and they're like in, maybe in their late 30s, 40s, and they want companionship? Just because maybe it's perceived that they're not fertile anymore, they are now left to be alone and go through this life alone with no companionship, no support, no, you know, no one yeah. to, to call their own. This is, this is this wrong. Is this is not what Islam calls This is the situation we are in. Sort yeah. of, so there are a lot of sisters who are at age and they're not married because there's this view that they're too old to be married. And, you know, it goes back to what Simon says, actually. Age and, and this kind of idea of youth is something that we socially construct. Mm. Generally, Allah is the one that decides when people, at least in terms of um, device, when that actually happens. For some reason, some people experience problems getting married. What's important is to realize that as long as that realize that you need to be ready for that to happen you need yeah. to be ready for to actually have a child as well and even for women that choose to have um, a, a career outside the home um, for whatever reason before they get married they shouldn't be stigmatized just because they do that as well yeah. but also for the woman that chooses to nurture her child and get married at a young age um, that should be something that actually should be supported when, obviously, given uh, ages of maturity, knowing, knowing each person, knowing their rights, that should be promoted. If anything, um, people adopting this idea that women who are young shouldn't have, children at, um, shouldn't have children at the age that they want to have children, so whether that's early 20s or, um, or even teenagers, is false. And if anything, it just shows in terms of choices that actually liberal feminism is holds the back. For that. Just, we're coming to the end of the show now, mm -hmm. so give us your take on message, Sister Zara. 
um, my take on everything that we've spoken about. I take her message. Oh, okay. What do we take away from this? What should our sisters take away from this? I think, um, like the sisters have um, explained today, uh, you know, you know when you're ready, and at the same time, I think family support it's a, plays a big part. So always kind of stick, you know, with what your what your family are contributing and saying towards, you know, towards the marriage and stuff. And you know, sometimes your parents know best. And I think when you become yeah. a mother, you learn that. Yeah. And you know, you always when you're young, you always have this, you know, conception of oh, you know. Um, I know best and why is my mum, you know, telling me I can't get married, I'm young, and I'm, you know, I want to do this kind of thing. But at the end of the day, they know what's, you know, they want you to kind of have stability, be mature, and they want for your own good. And I think becoming a mother, I, have to say, I know that for myself. Unfortunately, as time goes on, you realise, oh my God, my parents are right, right. I really yep. should have listened to and them. You know when your mum always says, <laughs> when you get, you know, when you have your own child, that's when you'll yeah. know, and then this you find out. <laughs> okay, my, my, take, my go home message on this topic is that, look, I think the Muslim community need to wait up as to why our youth are wanting to get married young. Is it because this is a revival of some kind of sunnah? I don't think so. As a youth worker, I can see many youth coming to me asking to get married because what they're trying to do is make their girlfriend or boyfriend halal. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a beautiful thing because it shows that there's a struggle in our youth today of trying to um, uh, live in, an, in a non-Muslim, non-Islamic environment and st still try and hold on to Islamic values, which is to um, ha have in uh, physical relationships within a marriage. But I think we do need to emphasize the fact that, look, are you ready? Because along with marriage, it's not just about making the physical relationship, i.e. the sex halal, yeah? It's about actually taking upon all the responsibilities that come after you've done the deed, yeah? That means be being ready to be a father, being ready to be a mother. I want to give an example, if I could, yeah? I see, I had a, a brother come to me recently, and he's like, oh, you know what, please help me get married. But I asked him, do you pray five times a day? No, yeah? But help me get married. You Why don't you sort your relationship out with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first, have sabr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put barakah in your marriage and make the path easy for you to get married and your marriage will probably last inshallah. And on that point, some very interesting points. I think we can leave sisters to think about some really, really crucial points made there for this topic. And I think we can really, can we have another show on this? I think it's just so relevant. <laughs> You know, motherhood is not just a big blessing, but also a big responsibility and one that needs to be carefully considered. We know that our children are in Amana, a trust, and that we have to fulfill, to the, to fulfill their rights over us and raise them in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us remember the dua found in the Quran in 4615. My Lord, enable me to be grateful for your favor, which you have bestowed upon me and upon my parents, and to work righteousness of which you will approve and make me righteous for me and my offspring. Amen. This, inshallah, has been a much-needed discussion for all our young mothers out there. But if you missed any of it, all is not lost, you can catch the repeat tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. And, of course, you can catch the highlights from this week on Sunday at 3 p.m. We're off to another break now, but, to stay ch but do stay tuned as we will be back with our last segment, a very interesting one, where we will be looking at what I like to call a thought-provoking poem. Stay tuned for that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.